Everyone knows that art imitates life, so it stands to reason that a lot of your favorite comic book characters were in part based on real people. We all know about Greg Land tracing Playboy models in order to get most of his characters, but it goes beyond just that. Here's 10 comic book characters based on real people. Let us know what your favorites are, and remember to push that red button to subscribe for more. Conrad Vate. We've talked about the Joker's influence on CBR, and aside from pulpy shadow villains, silent film star Conrad Vate's portrayal of Gwynplaine in The Man Who Laughs served as the single biggest visual reference for the character. Bob Kane, Bill Finger, and Jerry Robinson were so in love with the look of Vate that they, with the level of creativity you'd expect from early era Batman, took a picture of Conrad Vate, drew him, and then colored his hair green green with virtually no other changes to his appearance. While there are lots of contradicting stories about the Joker's origin, one thing all three creators agree on is that without Conrad Vate, the Joker would have looked very, very different. The Kingpin, Sidney Greenstreet. The Kingpin is one of the greatest villains in Marvel Comics, a master manipulator that always pushes Spider-Man and especially Daredevil to their limits. When he was originally created, however, Wilson Fisk was far from the Kingpin of crime that Frank Miller would eventually turn him into. He was more of a villain of the week and a stereotypical mob boss. Stan Lee came to John Romita Sr. and said that he had an idea for a character and that the character's name would be the Kingpin, and then in true Marvel fashion it was up to Romita to work out the details. Romita based the character on Sidney Greenstreet, a mountain of a man who had appeared in several successful noir films at the time. Greenstreet's huge stature and white suit from Casablanca were all taken and attributed to the Kingpin, and since then, it's been more or less Kingpin's signature look. Wolverine Paul D'Amato While Wolverine is one of the most famous comic book characters ever, it took a while before anyone saw Logan unmasked. When he was finally unmasked, he looked a little different to how we imagine him today. The iconic look of Wolverine, so distinct that he's instantly recognizable even without the mask, was created by John Byrne. Byrne based the look on the actor Paul D'Amato, known for his small role in Slapshot as Dr. Hook. Paul, who looked both like Wolverine then and still looks like him now, has exactly the look you'd expect with the wide face, strong eyebrows, and vaguely angry look that lends itself so wonderfully to Wolverine. Unfortunately, Paul D'Amato never received any royalties for his likeness, nor did his acting career take him to big Hollywood roles. But at the very least, he can say that he is the Wolverine. Iron Fist, David Carradine for years, Iron Fist has been one of those characters that just kind of flies under the radar. While the hardest of the hardcore know him, others only became aware of Danny Rand when it was announced that he was going to be the fourth in the Defenders series. While he was an attempt to cash in on the kung fu craze of the 70s, Danny Rand was specifically based off martial arts movie veteran David Carradine, who at the time was starring in a TV show called Kung Fu. While the appearance was changed, the core idea was heavily taken from the TV show, and Marvel added in the mysticism and magic that we've come to expect from the comic books. While he's had relatively few epic stories compared to other superheroes, we can only imagine that Iron Fist's popularity will surge thanks to the exposure from the Defenders. Ultimate Nick Fury Samuel L. Jackson it shouldn't come as any surprise that these two are late. While initially, Ultimate Nick Fury looked more like 616 Fury, but black, they eventually changed his design drastically and specifically asked Samuel L. Jackson if he'd lend his likeness to the character. Samuel L. Jackson agreed in the knowledge that it meant that when the time finally came to do a movie, he would get to play the character, who he was a fan of. Which is why when you look at Ultimate Nick Fury and Samuel L. Jackson, well, there's really no difference. So Nick Fury is probably the most seamless transition from comic to film character Character out there. In a world in which it's so easy to miscast someone for an iconic role, we're probably never gonna get another casting quite like this. Constantine Sting. Originally appearing in the saga of the Swamp Thing, the Liverpudlian Hellblazer John Constantine had his appearance based directly off the lead singer of the police, Sting. Wanting a rougher look without going the full muscle-bound route, Constantine was modeled after the lean, blonde singer, and to this day, Alan Moore insists that he has met the character not once, but twice. Moore also maintains that it was not Sting he met, but a real-life version of the character he created. While we can't attest to the truth of the story or Alan Moore's wellness, it does highlight what's so brilliant about the design of John Constantine. He looks like a guy. While other comic book characters attempt to be average guys, Constantine just looks like someone you can meet in a bar. And the less said about the Keanu Reeves version of the character, the better. Charles Xavier, Martin Luther King, and Yul Brynner. While we typically think of Professor X as being an old man because of Patrick Stewart's portrayal of the character in the movies, when the X-Men were originally conceived, it wasn't intended for Magneto and Xavier to be much older than their 40s. While Magneto had a Holocaust background, the Holocaust had only happened some 20 years before the comics were first written. As such, the design of Charles Xavier was not that of an old man, just a bald one, with the King and I star, Yul Brynner, serving as the main inspiration for Charles' appearance. Despite the appearance, though, Charles Xavier as a person is inspired quite heavily by Martin 
Martin Luther King. Both are civil rights activists who hope for the union of all races. With the X-Men being a stand-in for oppressed ethnic minorities in a time in which the CCA prevented much talk about real-life discrimination, Xavier is there to put humanity on the right path. Magneto, Malcolm X. While maybe not initially intended to be based off of Malcolm X, Magneto certainly became a stand-in for Malcolm X when the X-Men became more about civil rights. While Xavier was the Martin Luther King who praises peace, Magneto's modus operandi is about mutant superiority and domination. That's not unlike Malcolm X's earlier opinions while part of the Nation of Islam, prior to his pilgrimage and conversation to Sunni Islam, after which he took on a belief more in line with MLK. With the X-Men largely being based around the racial discrimination going on in the day, it's certainly interesting to see the way that the characters in the comics reflected the real-life events of prior decades. Magneto's even softened on occasion to work with the X-Men, making him even more like the later Malcolm X. Catwoman, Jean Harlow, and Hedy Lamarr. Batman is heavily inspired by film noir, and one of the key elements of film noir is the femme fatale. Actresses like Jean Harlow and Hedy Lamarr over the decades have filled the roles of beautiful women who bring nothing but trouble to those who try to pursue them. Those two actresses served as the primary inspiration behind Batman's own femme fatale, Catwoman. While Catwoman has been reimagined many times, she was originally a classy lady in the same vein as characters from movies like Chinatown and the Maltese Falcon. Over time, Catwoman has evolved into a more outlandish character with supreme balance, flexibility, and other comic book attributes, but she still retains that mysterious, flirtatious personality that made her a staple of Batman lore. Harley Quinn, Arlene Sorkin. Not unlike Nick Fury, Harley Quinn was inspired by the actress to play her, TV star Arlene Sorkin, who served as the original voice for Harley Quinn. In particular, it was inspired by a scene from the soap opera Days of Our Lives, in which Arlene Sorkin's character dresses and acts like a jester. Paul Dini saw the scene from the fantasy sequence and thought that it fit perfectly with his idea to give the Joker a female henchman in his gang. As he was already friends with Arlene Sorkin, he asked her to provide the voice and the rest is history. Harley Quinn debuted in Batman the Animated Series and became so popular that she crossed over into the comics and movies, and eventually went from the Joker's clownish girlfriend into probably the biggest sex symbol in comics. Good for her. Well, that's all we have time for today. But are there any others that you know about that you wish we had covered? Leave a comment and let us know. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and check out the rest of our channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to CBR for cool vids about movies, action heroes, gaming, comics, and more.